Afternoon, my forensics folk. Uh, Mr. Andrews here. Going to do a quick demo on proper chain of custody procedures. I don't have everything, obviously, in my little apartment, but I do have um, enough to kind of give you an idea of what chain of custody procedures look like, and, and at least enough so that you can approximate a similar procedure for your video submission. So, the whole idea behind chain of custody is to prevent contamination of evidence and have a log of everyone who has been in contact or possession of that evidence. So things that we need are a chain of custody label. Um, this one is attached to your assignment. If you have a printer, you can print that out. Uh, if you don't, you can hand draw one. It's not too hard. Uh, a paper bindle. These are usually a, a, a more sturdy brown paper style, uh, but Again, I have printer paper. It's what I'm working with in my apartment. You might use note paper or something similar. Um, pens, some tape. Doesn't really matter what kind of tape, just for our experimental purposes. And uh, I'm using a Swiss Army knife um, and some scissors. But again, you can make do with what you have. So at this crime scene that I'm at, we have some unidentified yellow powdery substance. Could be drugs, could be cornmeal, could be anything, but we can't know until we take it back to a lab. There could also be other evidence in it, such as uh, DNA or other contaminants, so I want to make sure that I don't get my own self on it. So I'm going to use a Swiss Army knife, and I'm going to scoop some up, and I'm going to put it in the center put it in the center of my paper bindle here. So now I have a sample of this powder. So the next step is to secure this paper so that it's not going anywhere. And you'll notice that my paper is already folded in thirds vertically and in thirds horizontally. So I'm going to fold this over. And then what we're going to do, make sure that no, nothing's falling out of the cracks here, is we're going to fold. And we're going to take one of these ends and tuck it into the other end. I find it's a little bit easier to make that happen if we fold the corners over, give ourselves a little more of a target to hit, and we're going to tuck this end into this end. And it requires a little bit of finessing. Oops, it is a little bit of finessing. And we're going to pack that in nice and snug. There. And now we have this dry powder in a little dry paper envelope. The next step is our chain of custody label. Top row, received from. Uh, I'm the initial investigator, so I'm going to leave that part blank. Received by Andrews. Today's date. 12-1-2020, and I'm doing this at about, what time is it? It is 5.55. So forget the about, let's be specific. 5.55 p.m. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this custody label and this piece of evidence, and I'm going to put them into a Ziploc bag. Now, if I was a crime scene investigator, I would, of course, have a much sturdier uh, specialized bag, but sandwich bag is going to serve our purpose today. So now I have my evidence in its bindle and my chain of custody label inside the bag. Last step, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my bag, fold it over, take a little strip of tape, and seal that right there. Last step, taking a Sharpie or other pen and signing your name like you would an official envelope that goes across the tape onto the bag. So if the tape is removed, we'll see that break in the signature and we will know if that bag has been opened improperly. So there is a proper chain of custody label and evidence packaging. Oh, and you can see I did not package it very well. I didn't tuck it all the way in and my evidence is spilling out. So Mr. Andrews made a pretty big error with that one. That should be more properly tucked in. So let's imagine that uh, you are in a lab setting and you're about to do some analysis and someone gives you a pre-made bag. 
So this was received from Suspect 1 by Investigator Andrews on November 30th. And I now need to open this up to do some analysis of it. I see that this signature runs, it's a heck of a signature, runs across the tape onto the bag, so I know this has not been opened. So the trick here is that when you're reopening evidence, you don't remove the tape. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pair of scissors or a knife, and you are going to open one of the edges. So now we can remove the chain of custody label and the evidence. I then received from Andrews and say for the sake of this, my name is Dawson. And uh, again, the new date, 12-1-2020, the time, 5, what time is it now? 5.57 p.m. And I would then open this up, do my analysis of it. When it's time to finish my analysis, I would put the evidence back. I would slip it back into the bag with the original tape and signature, then get another plastic bag, put this whole, this whole thing into a new plastic bag, seal it, tape it, sign it. It's going to be like a nesting bag, uh, like a nesting doll of evidence bags. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that because I only have so many sandwich bags left. So uh, that is your guide. I made a few mistakes, some that I called out, some that I did not. There are areas in which I could improve my evidence collection and packaging or um, imp uh, improve my interaction with the evidence. There's a lot of ways that I could do that. Bonus points, if in your own little video submission, you cite some of the ways that I could have improved my evidence collection and packaging, and uh, even more bonus points, if you can show the proper ways in your video and uh, build upon what I did. All right, guys, have fun with this.